A shade overcast, 80 degree night at Occidental College, eight miles northeast of Los Angeles for the Sunset Tour. Kudos to Jesse Williams, not the high jumper, but the meat promoter who does just such a marvelous job with all these sound, uh, sound running races. And we've got another good one here. The men's steeple, the world championship entry standard is 815 flat. And I bring that up because Ahmed Jaziri just ran 8.15.35 in mid-June, so he is nipping at it. He's from Tunisia, and he's the NCAA steeplechase champion in 2022. 25 years old, the young man, and uh, two-time Tunisian champ in other events, the 1,500 and 5,000. There you see Ahmed Jaziri there, number nine, representing Under Armour and Tunisia. So what do you think, Will? Can we get an 815 out of him today? You know, that's a tall ask. Uh, it's a tall ask in a race with no pacer. Ahmed certainly has that in his legs. We've seen him uh, execute some really spectacular races um, earlier this summer. But what I've, I went and talked to his coach earlier in the day, and what it sounds like is they are just looking for yet another solid performance. Again, the name of the game right now is don't screw anything up maintain your status in the world rankings quota, which he's right there. He's not, I would not say Ahmed is a bubble athlete at all. Um, he's bubble in terms of achieving or not achieving the world championship qualifying time. He just needs to run something solid, but look to him to try and get a, a very productive performance out of himself tonight. Um, whereas there's some athletes here who are, who are looking for personal best. I'm, I'm, I'm looking to guys like silky Wilkie, Matt Wilkerson um, out of the university of Minnesota, just graduated trying to cement his place in the world of professional steeplechasers. Um, you know, the first time, his first time ever racing at Jack Kemp Stadium at Occidental College. Uh, his brother was a Skyac athlete um, out at Claremont Mud Scripps. But a lot of interesting storylines here. There are, and, and Matt Wilkinson, who we saw uh, number seven down there, uh, he is uh, was sixth in the USATF meet, uh, lifetime best, 823.69. That came on top of a fifth at the NCAAs and uh, first at the Big Ten Championships. And he also had two NCAA three title, Division three titles at Carleton. There's Matt right there in the middle. So he's a big yeah, game hunter. Wondering, he knows what to do. <laughs> if, you, if you were wondering why I liked him, the guy flies the D3 flag. We also happen to share the same alma mater for high school. We're both Minnetonka High School grads. Go Skippers. Um, but I've known Matt ever since he was in eighth grade. Uh, great guy, but you know has really shown himself this year. Um, hardened through racing in division three and had that ax sharpened by division one. And so he's, he's really learned how to stick it in there with the big boys. Um, excited to see what he can do tonight and uh, got to go for a run with Matt actually a couple of weeks ago in Minneapolis on a hot summer's evening and just sort of pick his brain of what he was excited about. And top of mind was this race right here. So it looks like we have a couple of scratches here, Brian Barraza and Jackson Messler. Um, was hoping to see Messler. He's hot off his PR of 824.33, which he did at the USA TV, TF meet when he placed seventh. But his OTC Oregon Track Club teammate, Aiden Tooker, who also ran a lifetime best at the uh, at the uh, Nationals, 829.92. He's in there. He was fourth at the 18 NCAAs. He is number 10. That tall figure, two from the left, that's Daniel Mikulski. He was fourth at the U.S. Olympic trials in 2021. He has a lifetime best of 820.96. So he is actually the third fastest in this field right now. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Tom. I do think I see Brian Barraza there uh, in running in second place behind Daniel Ribich um, of Uni Athletics Club as uh, Craig Nowak, the, the formidable 800 and 1500 meter pacer, is also you know trying his chops. He loves the steeplechase. He can't stay away from it. Um, but the field looking like it's bunching up a little bit, but I, I only think that's because the quality of these runners is so similar across the board. I don't think that their pace is particularly slow. The guys look like they're moving pretty decently down the home stretch here um, as we come into our first barrier. And that was that's actually Joey Barriatua uh, from oh, Tin Man Elite. Oh, no, no worries. Uh, and uh, Joey Barriatua from Tin Man Elite. He ran his lifetime mile best on this track last year, 357.72, and he's hot off an 825.98, which he ran at LA, in LA, in the city, of course, uh, back in, uh, on May 26. Now, your early leader is David Ribich, uh, a name very familiar, went to uh, Western Oregon, uh, and he's representing the Union Athletic Club. Ribich, 
former 1500 meter runner in his lifetime best set on this track. It's it, sounding like a broken record. 335.51 in uh, last year at the Oxy meet. And of course, now we had a major fall there by. So we're by we'll, Ribich. Uh, Ribich obviously practicing, Ribich Ribich. practicing his gymnastics out there with a beautiful somersault yeah. out of the uh, very uncharacteristic move out of the water pit. Seemed like he didn't slow down too, too much. Um, and I hope he's not too shaken up, but that was uh, early on in this race to be taken spills. And we may get a replay of that, and we can we can take a look at that. Of course, that may be the catalyst to him winning the race because we saw Kenneth Rooks take a nasty spill at the USATF meet. And look what happened there. He ends up running a lifetime best, betters his collegiate record. And uh, so uh, into the lead now is Craig Nowak. And Nowak, very classy runner. Uh, 29 years old, 8.27.18, lifetime best in this event. Season's best is 8.28.27. Jaziri comfortably in second. Mikulski there in third, as expected. Now Wilkinson moving up into the fifth position. Ribich has a little bit of trouble again on that water jump. He's in sixth. Barry Atua seventh. And at the back of that pack, that is Aiden Tooker. So yeah, no you got to think that maybe some Siri. maybe some of these guys. Sorry, Tom. Uh, yeah, you got to think that maybe some of these guys before the race started talking. You know, hey, you take a lap, I'll take a lap. Someone else is going to take some laps in here because it does seem as though uh, David Ribich got them out to a hot early pace um, and showing a little bit of his, uh, his, his lack of experience in this event going over that water pit um, as some of the more experienced steeplers are putting distance between themselves and Mr. Ribich. But here's a replay of that incredible somersault. I mean, gosh, he's, he's probably going to get some recruiting calls from USA Gymnastics after that feat. Well, and we had two go down there uh, because not only was did Ribich go down, that made it may have been Anna Nohilly that also went down on that uh, uh, on that uh, situation by Ribich. It certainly could be a Sports Center top ten highlight potentially. Um, <laughs> now Jaziri tucked in there in second, and Mikulski in third. Again, technique is so important in this event. You know, I look at some of the people like Courtney Frerichs that just look like she's born to hurdle, uh, you know, and, and her technique. Then you look at some of the Kenyans, and even though they have the speed, they don't know what they're doing over the barriers. Uh, and it's, they'll sometimes jump off two feet to go over the barriers. So technically, you can pick up a lot of ground if you have good uh, form. You know, the beauty of the steeplechase is that this is, a, this is a loaf of bread that can be sliced many different ways. Most of this event is flat running. And so I think for a long time, we saw athletes that were maybe just on the cusp of being world class in their fast events. So a lot of Kenyan athletes who were knocking on the door of maybe some medals in the 3K or the indoors or the 5K outdoors, um, but they weren't quite there. And so throw a couple of barriers in a water pit in their way and they can see what they do. Obviously, for some of those athletes practicing over the technical aspects of this event, was not a priority, um, but we're seeing now Ahmed Jaziri go to the front. Doesn't want to let this pa pace lag too much. Um, again, tap on the shoulder to Craig Nowak. The guy has got to feel more comfortable up front. He does it all year in his pacemaking duties, um, but there's still a very strong lead pack here in the men's steeplechase. With, uh, and we're, we're running we about we're coming up on three laps to go. Yeah, and we're running about 820 pace. And Jaziri also has an interesting technique. He goes over the barriers almost to the side there. So it is uh, Jaziri Mikulski very comfortably in second. Barry Atua is in third. And then... Can't Alec Bastin and there. Silky Wilkie in fourth and fifth. Yeah, yeah Bastin, so two Minnesota grads. Yeah, Bastin... Uh, Earlier this year, participated in the World Cross Country Championships representing Team USA, a team that took fifth. He, of course, had a knockout season in 2021, second at the NCAAs, first in the Big Ten. Has struggled a bit since that 2021 season when he ran 8.22.22. Baston season's best is 8.26.90, but he sure looks comfortable there in fourth place as Jaziri's just opening up a little bit of a margin here. Yeah, to me, it looks like this is a, a planned execution from Ahmed in the front. Uh, Ahmed was told by, by his coach and agent, don't do anything crazy. Run a very metered race. You just have to finish and you have to finish strong. So 
Um, coming in with a W and, and a bunch of bonus points from this bronze label uh, Continental Tour meet would be great. But he's got company and he's a competitor. So we'll see what these guys can do over the last two laps. Mikulski, a consummate competitor. Um, Joey Bags, sort of looking around, he looks comfortable. He knows he can run a fast mile in this race. So what has he got in those legs for the steeplechase? And Wilkinson dropping back, which is a little bit of a surprise, but of course it's a long season to run all those collegiate meets and then run as well as he did at USATF. Right behind him is Aiden Tooker, who may just be very close to his own lifetime best uh, pace. But these four have certainly broken away. That's Jaziri in the lead, Mikulski, and Barry Atua right there neck and neck in second. Baston still looking terrific right there in fourth. And that last lap, 65-6 for Jaziri. So, and Baston was 65-7. Baston moving up to third now. This may be Baston's best race in two years. And we're coming up now to the bell lap and Baston is gonna move, possibly move into second ahead of Barry Atua. Jaziri looks behind him. One lap to go, let's see what we've got. It's about eight, uh, 7.23 with a lap to go. You gotta love seeing that Alec Baston. You gotta love seeing Alec Baston out there in the speed suit saying, you know, this isn't just for the Ingebrigtsens. This isn't just for the flat events. I'm out here to show that I can look good and hurl good too. Uh, but you gotta love to see it. Uh, Ahmed just opening up so effortlessly in the backstretch and his teammate who he's put in all the hard yards with Alec Baston chasing him down the backstretch. He, they've competed in workouts. They've competed in races. Alec looking a little bit wobbly over that uh, uh, penultimate barrier before the water pit, but this is all Ahmed Jaziri. He's putting this field to work right now. Yeah, he looks like he could be a world championship finalist for Tunisia. So it is Jaziri and Baston now really going to the arms and a quicker tempo. Barry at two is struggling, but Baston's gonna make a run at this. And the final barrier, Jaziri gonna put the, uh, put the head down and go. We may see a couple PRs behind him, but Ahmed Jaziri from Tunisia, a big win there. Baston in second, Barry at two at third. Wilkinson comes up for fourth. Looks like Aiden Tooker and Mikulski were tight there for fifth and sixth. Barry at two at 828.57. Matt Wilkinson in fourth, Mikulski in fifth, Aiden took her another fine finish for that young man. Closed in 64-1. Jaziri closed in 61-2, took her 831-42. And the two guys that got tangled up on that water jump still finished the race. Kudos to them. Ribich and no Nohilly, and they both ran the exact same time, 854-50. And there you can see Nohilly go down. He's in the black there, but he got himself squared away and got himself back up, Will. Yeah, and this is, uh, you know, looking with 400 meters to go. Alec ran an exceptionally executed race. Ahmed did exactly what he needed to do. And these boys are primed to have some big summers ahead of them. You know, Ahmed's heading to Budapest here in a couple of weeks. He knows he just ticked that box. You can see what finger wag there at the end. Punch my ticket, book it, let's go. Coach Corey Leslie, I saw him standing with about 350 meters to go um, on this track, just cheering these guys on. Uh, great day to be an Under Armour Mission Run Baltimore distance athlete. Well put. And again, yeah, that and, steeple. And, sorry, go ahead, Tom. That steeple. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, the steeple entry standard uh, for Worlds is 815.00. When I look down the list of the world championship, you know, quasi qualifiers, it's this run to Budapest, it's a little confusing because Jaziri's name isn't even on there as like a potential person. What is that? Uh, you know, I, I'm sure I'm not the only clueless person out there. No, you're not. So uh, the metrics by which they establish a ranking are a, a little bit convoluted, and we'll revisit this later in the day um, that, you know, Ahmed needs three steeple chases and i think that or, or maybe it could be more than that don't quote me on it but i think there's a certain number of steeples that you need to run and he didn't have enough in the window and so uh so this summer he needed to he needed a race right now that was faster than a certain time but with the bonus points of this being as i said earlier a bronze label continental tour meet um he would earn enough points to solidify his position in the rankings quota and that's exactly what he did tonight knowing that that 824 was uh was good enough with the bonus points to solidify his position and so when the rankings get updated he'll be right there all right let's go down to chris nickinson with jaziri 
Take it away, Chris. All right. All right, Ahmed. Not that we were talking this, not the quickest time tonight, but it looked like good competition, good reps for getting ready for Worlds, right? Exactly. That my goal today was just compete and have fun and try to win the race. And also, I need to run like three, three steeper shades for this season to make the World Championships. Even I don't make the World Time Standard, so you can make with the points. So this race, like, is my third race for this season. So uh, ready for Budapest and see what what we can do. But but it's good to get that traffic that traffic racing in, right? Not yeah, just yeah, time yeah. trial ahead of time. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I I would run like the under 8:15 today, but there is no uh, no fast like fast pace. We start like 66 and then 68, 69, which is not the, the time that we we need to run 8:15. But yeah, I'm I'm so excited, I'm so happy. Uh, I feel like I'm I'm ready and I I could run under 8:15 this year. Oh, man, do you have any other races lined up before Budapest? Uh, no, just to go back to altitude and do like two more weeks and then go to Budapest. Yeah. All right, well, that's Ahmed Jazeera, your men's steeplechase champion here tonight at the Under Armour Sunset Tour in L.A. Back to you, Tom. Thanks, Chris. And, uh, of course, I think the steeplechase is going to be one of the uh, premier events when we have 